I know a lot of students have this issue where it seems as you're trying to study, you're trying to concentrate, and your mind is just going places. So there's actually a solution to it. And if you want to find out what that solution is, you have to stick through to the end of this video. Hello everyone, you're welcome to another episode of On Becoming a Doctor. If you're new here, my name is Gosto, I'm a medical practitioner, a YouTuber, and also I coach medical students. Today, let's have a discussion about Wandering Mind. Now, the human mind is constantly being plagued by information, entertainment, and everything we have as distractions in our environment. So this conversation on focus has really become much more important for us. Now, our attention usually is a currency that we have, that we have to spend and there is this contention between our attention and other things whether within the physical environment or just within our mind that would want to take us away from what we primarily want to focus our attention on and this said situation now paves the way for the issue of a wandering mind now what is a wandering mind a wandering mind essentially is a mind that flits around you're questioning, you're asking, you're by yourself also giving yourself answers in your mind. You see how many times I've had to repeat yourself because everything you're doing in your mind by yourself. Questioning, thinking, worrying, imagining, creating problems and coming up with the solutions all by yourself. Essentially, a wandering, a wandering mind flits around, just goes about all over the place like a fly that is looking for where to perch and people have that difficulty eventually settling on what they want their mind to focus on at a particular point in time. Now what causes a wandering mind? There are lots of theories about the causes of a wandering mind but I think it's important to highlight two things at this point in time. Now one can, ha one can have distractions and one can have tractions so um, because the brain adopts a kind of mechanism where it sort of wants to go for the more pleasurable activity and the less activity that will require you to put in a certain level of whether mental energy or even physical energy. So the brain tends to want to select the more what it interprets as more pleasurable in that particular instance. And from this cascade, one can have two things. You can either have distractions or tractions. So your brain, yes, understands the fact that it's more pleasurable in the long term for me to study. The right thing in that instance will be for you to have traction. Traction is pulling you towards the right action. You know, your mind goes, okay, I need to set up my study space. I need to fix this. I need to get my reading lamp. I need to get all, all of that is a traction that is taking you towards where you want to be. But distractions rather will take you towards the place where you do not want to go. So instead of you to be studying, you're thinking about seeing a movie, going out, hanging out with friends, adjusting, playing, and all of those kind. Now that falls into the category of distraction. So we would always have these two things pulling us. You either get the tractions or you get the distractions. Now the effects of a wandering mind, they are numerous, but I will sum them into about three things for you. The first is that it slows down your reading speed. Now imagine having to focus on a book for quite a duration of time, all right, now, and then your mind is going places and you get to catch yourself, let's say every five minutes. The valuable time you would have spent actually studying that material is spent with your mind going to the different places you do not want it to go. So you see that your speed is significantly reduced by this issue of a wandering mind. The next thing it affects is your comprehension. Because sometimes it's not just about the speed. Even if the speed is there, you're going through your books as fast as you can, trying to comprehend. And then you realize that you finish reading a paragraph or maybe an entire page and your mind was entirely somewhere else. Your eyes were moving quite all right, but your mind was somewhere else entirely. So this also affects the issue of comprehension. And if your speed is affected, comprehension is affected, definitely we know that recall will be a problem. Because even sometimes when you're trying to do active recall, you see that in that process of trying to do active recall, yes, the mind still wants to drift off you know, a number of times. But that's the advantage of active recall um, over other new reading strategies. You can sort of catch it and nip it in the bud at that particular time. Now, there are scientific ways of controlling a wandering mind, which I'll be identifying and pointing out to you. Most of these I've used practically as a student and even currently, even as a medical doctor, I still make use of them. So I'll be highlighting them for you. And these are things that if you put them into use, definitely the issue of a wandering mind will become a thing of the past. Now you have to find your totem. Your totem is that thing that motivates you, kind of inspires you, and wants you to rechannel your energy in the right direction. So typically for me in school, this was something like where I study, I have it on the wall, about three or four things that I would always look at. And it gives me this sort of energy and a reason to 
be more intentional about utilizing my attention well. Now, the first was something like make family proud. The second was you're working to be among the best, if not the best. And the third in this instance was you're going to be a great doctor someday. You know, as we usually say, it, you're not studying to pass an exam. You're studying to save the life of a patient. So all of these things were within my visual field because you want to keep it within reach. You want to keep it within a space where you can see it. And anytime I looked at it, it just gave me this reason to be more focused. You know, I had to make family proud. If you want to be the best student, you have to put in a requisite amount of effort. You have to maximize your time. All of these were reminders for me that, okay, I have to maximize my attention. I have to utilize my attention to the peak, to the peak possible way. So find that totem around where you're studying, on the table, on the wall. Put all these things that would sort of always keep you in check and keep you in focus. Anytime you're trying to get distracted, once you see it, it gives you that push that you need again. Sometimes it was the pictures of maybe people that I felt inspired by, people I knew that had, you know, this energy for focus and all of that. Once I see those pictures, I get all fired up again. Sometimes it's my screensaver. So your totem can come in different ways. It might be the screensaver on your laptop, it might be the screensaver on your on your desktop, on your phone rather. Whatever it is, find that thing and put it within a space where you can always see it spontaneously. Even if you're not looking for it, once you turn your eyes, you turn your face, it's something that you're seeing. Now, you need to promise yourself a reward. Now, I know I've said in one of my videos that reward is not good for long-term purposes, but yes, in the short term, it's actually very effective because your mind is like a muzzle, your willpower, you're trying to train it, you're trying to exercise it. So, you're going to tell yourself, if you have a drink by your side, for those of you that like to take beverages while you're studying, if I can focus for a particular duration of time, let's say 10 minutes without interruption at all, I'm going to take a sip of this drink. Or if it's a snack, I'm going to take a bite of this snack. And then you keep increasing it. You go for 20 minutes, you go for 30 minutes, you go for 40 minutes, you go for 50 minutes, up until the point where, let's say, you hang around 50 minutes or one hour. If you can even go, go beyond that, that's super fine. I know for me, my attention span most times stays around between that 50 to 55 minutes and then I go on like 5 to 10 minutes intermittent breaks and that's how I move, that's how it works for me. So you might want to give yourself a reward system that just keeps helping you level up the peak duration that you can be focused for. So yes, you want to try that out. Maybe a reward system will work for you. Now you have to enter the state of flow. Now this is not some super avatar kind of flow but the state of flow is the point where you are so concentrated and so absorbed in what you're doing that your mind does not allow anything foreign into its space within that time now i'll give you a practical example you notice that sometimes when it's very close to a test or when it's very close to an exam you're actually reading and it feels like everything you're reading at that particular point in time is actually entering into your head and you can recall it and you're wondering what is happening why hasn't this been the case all along in the semester or all along in the session? Why does it feel like all of a sudden I have this superpower to remember everything I read? I'm so focused. My attention is channeled directly into what I want it to be. So that's like the state of flow for you in that particular instance. And you want to get to that space early on in the session, early on in the semester. Ideally, every time you study, you want to get to that state of flow. And this will be affected by a number of factors. First of all, your interest in that particular course would actually affect your ability to get into if you find a particular course very boring you will tend to always be distracted when you're reading that course but if it's a course that has picked your interest you're going to just see that your attention is fully focused anytime you're having to do something related to that particular course another thing that will determine the state of flow is the in quotes the pressure you're on so for those of you who work with a reading plan. Now, I told you how to plan in the video on planning, where you make a list of the things you want to read in that particular night. When you have a list of things you're chasing, your mind naturally would want to tailor itself towards that plan to make sure it meets the deadline. If you say you have four things to read within, let's say, six hours, you're different from someone who has no aim when he or she is studying. So, you know, what one thing the exam and test does for you is kind of it puts you under pressure. So that's your daily planner also has that effect for you. Once you're pressed for time, you tend to want to enter into the state of flow faster. Now, I'm not saying one should go for the negative pressure, you know, when it's like you've not studied at all and exams are staring at you in face. You're just going to be scattered and all over the place. But no, this is the kind of pressure that you place yourself under from the beginning of the session to make sure that 
whenever you sit down, settle down to study, your mind can actually focus on the task at hand. Now you have to empty your mind with journaling. I started this sometime in 2020, right? So once I'm studying, anything comes into my mind. You know, really it can be anything. Sometimes it's a task you have undone. You want to reach out to a friend. You want to call a family member. You know, there are many things that are just swarming your mind in that particular instance. So, and then you don't want to forget. And you know, I've said it in one of the videos, our brains are not for storing information. They are just for ideas. So sometimes you're even studying a different ideas are just flooding your mind quite a rather it's fine just keep a journal by your side and keep writing it down it has this thing of like it's like you're taking it out of the mental space and putting it on paper and in 90 percent of the cases once it drops on that paper you no longer have to worry about it or think about it when you're done with whatever you're doing in that particular instance then you now go and focus on them so once you see anything coming into your mind to bug your mind to disturb you Quickly put it down into that little pocket journal that you have there and then you attend to it later. I promise you this works. This one, I use it. I can testify about its effectiveness. So once anything comes into your mind, quickly pen it down there and then you attend to it later. Meditation. Now, this is scientifically, scientifically proven. It's not something that I have engaged in so well in terms of, you know, just trying to bring my mind towards the center, you know, allow it to wander back and all of those things they describe in meditation. I have things I meditate on actively, but the kind of meditation where, you know, you are sort of just bringing your mind to a place where there is nothing, there is nothing that you're focusing on that particular time except just the inner you kind of, I hope that describes it. So they believe that it helps. And this is still based on the principle of controlling like the willpower of the mind, the muscle of the mind, so that you're the one telling it where to go and not it taking you to places where you do not want to be. Now, the question is, maybe if you have other forms of, you know, meditation that you engage in, meditating on books you study, the Bible, you know, and all of that, it can also help you in this wise, build the muscle of the mind so you can channel it to what you want it to focus on part time. Yes, take short, short breaks after the peak concentration. You know, I told you before, for me, about 50 minutes, yes, that's usually like the peak for me. And then I go on like a five to 10 minutes break. And that works super well for me. So you want to go for short breaks after your peak concentration. Because once you get to the peak of concentration, your mind wants to relax. It starts taking you to places, all the distractions and everything starts flooding your mind in that particular instance. At least I can speak for myself personally. That's what I've noticed. So you want to take short breaks once you get to that peak of concentration, whatever the time is. So you know, short breaks, I always say, it's not meant for you to go and start scrolling through social media or surfing the net or trying to look for your favorite TV shows and all of that. Find something less mind engaging but relaxing for you to do you might just listen to a music take a walk take a bite of your snack or drink and all of that or do not go for something that is too distracting you have to sleep more sleep is essential it's necessary now not to the point where it becomes excess but for you to have a healthy mind you need to have a sane body there's a saying that you know i don't know if it's spanish or in, in um, Italian, men sana in sano. You know, I learned that in secondary school. We have a sound mind in a sane body. So your mind is as sound as your body. The more refreshed you feel, the more you'll be able to focus. So if you're noticing that, sometimes you even notice that like when you're drowsy, it's a lot more difficult for you to focus. All you want to do at that particular point in time is just to get rest. And most times, those people who tend to have a few hours of reading in the morning will tell you that once they read in the morning, they feel like everything that they are studying in the morning is actually sticking to their head because they are waking up with a refreshed body and a refreshed mind. So some decent amount of sleep will be appropriate for you. Now you decide what is appropriate for you. You can train your body into being used to a particular number of sleep. I don't recommend less than five hours of sleep on the average daily. It's recommended that you know one have has eight hours of sleep, but I, I don't take that as a personal recommendation for me, especially now that I'm young, where you know the strength and the vigor is there to sort of put the body in a difficult place without having to face the consequences. You get the point, right? And then as one grows older, obviously you try to get more rest. But at least now, five hours, six hours of sleep is good and fine. You can condition your body to that place always, and then you can take power naps. 
Anytime you feel stressed while studying, you can just take a 20 minute nap or a 30 minute nap. I know some of you right now in your mind are imagining like, no, I won't try that because maybe from there you just sleep three, four hours and you'll be angry with yourself. But you know the system that would work best for you. Find a system that ensures that you're having just enough sleep that your body needs to function appropriately. Now make time for your mind to wonder how beautiful this is going to be. So it's like the mind is doing something that it was kind of made to do, but it's just doing it at the wrong time when you're trying to study. Now what happens if you can actually create a time? frame where you just you know what it's like you relax and you allow the mind to go to all the places it wants to go to this might be 30 minutes 45 minutes or maybe one hour in a day and you just allow the mind travel far and wide everywhere it wants to wander to all the anxieties the task left undone everything allow it do its wandering and when you feel like your mind is a little bit more clear you know you know have time to focus on the task that you have to do at hand which in this case i'm referring to studying now now you have to catch the action so catch the action talks about nipping it in the bud it's not every time you'll be able to prevent your mind from wandering but what do you do after you catch yourself wandering so you notice sometimes as you're reading you're reading through the textbook you're reading through your slides maybe on your laptop or wherever and then you're like okay this mind has wandered sometimes we we go with that distraction you know we kind of just follow through and see it through to the end no that's kind of wrong so once you find out, once you catch yourself, just put an end to it there. Bring your mind back to the task, the primary task at hand at that particular time. So catch that action, nip it in the bud. And that would also serve a, as an avenue for you to sort of control the muscle of the mind. That's, you know, subconscious power to bring your mind to focus. Now work on the task hanging over your head. Like 30 to 40% of the things our mind wonder about if you're the type that is you know, a very productive person. Beyond medical school, you have other things you're doing. This would include the tasks that you have left undone. They might either be things you procrastinated on or the things that you thought you would remember but you did not plan to you did not plan for them by penning them down and attaching specific time, you know, to work on these things. So actually create time to sort out the tasks that you have left. Like when I used to study in school, I think particularly in year four, I had this, once I settled down to read in the space, you know, I decided to read the first 30 to 45 minutes, I quickly go through like my daily planner and I identify things I need to do, maybe to call someone, to remind someone of something. And I just kind of sort it out and get it out of the way. So, but now that I had that advantage cause I was a diligent planner especially in year four. I planned through all, all through medical school, but year four was very interesting because my jota was always full. Feel the tasks to do, feel the what to read and all of that. But So you need to start writing down the things that you're supposed to be doing. And that would significantly help you. Just check a good number of them off before you decide to now go into actual studying. So yes, in conclusion, apply these principles, relax and give room for improvement. Stay consistent. A lot of the things, you know, I tell you, talk to you about sometimes comes with practice the more consistent you are in the game the better you will improve and don't give up we have this um i know when the times that people are used to instant gratification you want something to work so fast but i can tell you from the entire number of years i spent in medical school one thing i've learned is that growth takes time so give yourself time to grow give yourself time to boom Take the intentional baby steps daily and in no time you'll make significant progress and you'll become that giant that you decide to be. So that's all for today. Thank you for sticking around. You expect a new episode by 12 p.m. next Sunday. I'll see you. Thank you.